key pump calibration. That's what you'll be able to do when you finish this series. Brought to you by Bosch. Be sure that you have the latest test specifications and written instructions. See that your pump has enough lubricating oil. You know that diesel fuel may act as a lubricant, but it won't keep your pump going. Of course, you know basic test bench procedures. How to mount the pump governor combination. How to align the coupling horizontally before you tighten the jaws. Begin by removing this cover, unless it was left off in your reassembly. For this application, you're using engine nozzle holders, so you run these test lines right into the tray to start with. When you've connected the feed hose, using an adapter like this to match the threads of the pump housing, you've completed your preparation. Set up to test port closure. First, bring your rack gauge into place like this. Adjust it so the magnet touches the rack. Fasten your protractor against the control lever. Move your stops clear, the high speed and low speed stops and the shutoff stop. Pull the rack full back and with some preload, zero the gauge with the outer ring. Plug the overflow using a fitting like this. After you remove this plug at number one element, rotate the pump until number one is at bottom dead center. BDC looks like this. The upper edge of the roller tappet will lift the finger of this lift to port closure gauge. So when you've preloaded and zeroed this gauge and locked your rack at full load, you've completed your setup to measure port closure. Remember, in timing, you are rotating number one for the specified lift. Then you're checking number one for port closure at that lift. For port closure, what is your specified plunger lift and what's your tolerance for number one? 2.8 in this case, plus one tenth. Okay. Now, slowly rotate the camshaft until you have raised number one plunger to the specified lift. Allowing for your preload, 2.8 millimeters. Right on. Let's see if you get port closure at that lift. But first, for that specified lift, set one edge of your pointer to zero on the degree wheel. Then bring number one back down to BDC. Turn on your bench and turn your knob for high pressure phasing. And there, on the right, a good steady flow from number one. Of course, at BDC, it's not yet port closed. Some of the other lines are also flowing, but we'll watch number one. Now, as you slowly rotate the camshaft forward again, keep your eye on number one. What will port closure look like? Like this. When you see the flow change to drops, that's port closure. Hold that camshaft angle. You should port close at zero degrees, matching your specified lift. OK? What if it did not close at zero degrees at the specified lift? You'd chain shims until it did. All right, with number one to spec, replace the plug after removing your gauge. That completes the timing of number one. Phasing, sometimes called internal pump timing, means setting port closure of each pumping element to equal intervals. Starting with zero degrees you've set for number one, you want the specified lift to port closure of each plunger to happen at equal intervals, at equal angles of camshaft rotation. And with number one shim to port close at the specified lift, you may be changing shims on others for port closure at equal intervals. 
Let's check it out. Check your spec for the firing order. You may think you remember, but not all sixes fire like this. In this case, rotate to number five and watch number five to see when it changes to drops. That's port closure. Hold it. And read your degree wheel. Did you port close at 60 degrees? No, it happened at 59. Is that okay? No, the tolerance is usually one half degree, plus or minus. In rotating one half degree, most cam lobes lift one tenth of a millimeter. Your port closure is one degree early, so you'll be adding two tenths when you change the shims of number five. You may remove the barrel to change a stack like this. Or with split shims like these, you need only loosen the barrel. But be sure both shims are the same size or you'll cock the barrel in the housing. Smart technicians mic the shims going in to be sure port closure will show up on spec. So in a few minutes, when you've checked the last element, number four here, you've completed phasing and timing. Balancing means setting for equal fuel deliveries, equal port openings after a set of equally spaced port closures. To begin, install this overflow valve and its return, and connect the test lines to engine nozzle holders you're using in these tests. In other pumps, you may already be connected to test nozzle holders. Be sure your feed pressure is up to spec as you bring the pump up to the speed for your equal delivery check. In this case, 1,000 RPM. Bring your control lever over to full load. Do you have the specified rack travel? Spec on this pump is 12 millimeters, and you're only getting 11.5. Should you take a draw? Not till you adjust the full load screw to get the specified rack travel at the test RPM. Now you've got the specified rack travel. Are you ready to measure delivery? Smart technicians take a draw at this point, but not for the money. Rather, they check out everything. They wet the tubes for a little extra precision. They make sure the test fluid is up to temperature. They observe the filling, check the pump and the lines for any signs of leaking. Then they dump and drain properly. Now they're ready for an accurate delivery measurement. Take a draw at the specified speed and rack travel. How does it look? Pretty good, but not good enough. Number three and number one are under the low spec. What will you do about that? Rotate the barrels, but first, scribe the flange setting of the barrels you're going to change. And with the nuts and lines loosened, you will rotate the barrel, in this case to increase delivery. Do you remember how rotation changes delivery? Of course, you're moving the port in relation to the plunger helix, so port opening will come a bit later. That increases delivery. When you have rechecked draw at the basic speed, drop down to the next RPM and take a series of draws for the rack position specified. You'll take a light draw at the lowest rack travel to check out metering and delivery valve action. Then at greater rack travels, the heavier draws to be sure of your full load delivery.
finally take a low speed delivery at light load. That checks out plungers and barrels as well as delivery valves. And that completes your calibration of the P-pump. Your pump may have some of these accessories. Check them according to your written instructions, usually as part of your governor calibration. In other programs, you'll learn about the governors which may be fitted to the P-pump, brought to you by Bosch.